Hey guys, Tibler. Today I got a look at the Charles Martel for a Tier 7 French cruiser. Here's my Rue build on the screen. This Martel is, as we'll discuss, um, the most offensively minded of all these cruisers, so you could potentially play around with Lemon on this ship and have a fair amount of success. It still is quite uh, fragile and you don't want to get shot a lot in this, so my current thinking is to pref prefer Rue, but as time goes on, I might look at Lemon a little bit more on the ship. I got two different games for you here. Two different builds in terms of the ship. This first one, I got it set up more um, in line with the rest of the French cruisers, i.e. max range, at least allowed by my commander build, and kind of staying back. Now... You still got great DPM on this ship. I do at this range the way I have it set up. It's like 16.6 max firing range. The other game uh, is more of a DPM maximizing build. Range drops down to 15.8, which isn't horrible, but it does put you in range of most cruisers and battleships. But the reload on that I believe is 8.8, .8, which this ship plays fairly similarly to the Megami. Megami's reload is 13.2 on my build. So you can see it's not quite half the reload of the Megami, but it's probably, you know, it's quite a bit <laughs> shorter. I'm not going to try and do any math or anything like that. But this first game, it still has good rated DPM. I didn't note the reload, unfortunately, and I've spent about 5 million credits flipping back and forth between the two packages. So I'm going to try and hold off <laughs> right now, but reload's still good. And I mean, you can figure it out on the screen here once I shoot again. If I ever do shoot again, apparently I never shoot again. But, you know, it's still, whatever, 10 seconds, 9 seconds, something like that. But the added range just gives you more time to react to incoming shells. Um... Yeah, apparently I don't ever shoot again. So I, that looked like about nine and a half seconds to me. So still the quickest reload of all of the other cruisers, at least the way that I have my ship set up. So the previous ships in this line were all kind of long range harassment. The guns initially started off with really long reload. They got better at the Algerie, but this ship kind of turns a corner and again, very fragile very similar in that um, regard, but the DPM allows you to do completely different things in terms of the damage that you're inflicting on the enemy. So you see there we're able to blind fire that, so I believe it's a destroyer sitting in the cloud. What you want to be doing when you're taking those shots is if they're sitting still and they're firing, you're gonna have shots emanating from essentially two points, the rear guns and the front guns. And then you want to drop the shot down a little bit. You got to imagine you're looking at the ship. So when the turrets, when you're looking at the side view of the ship, the turrets are up on top of the hull, obviously. So if you drop it down and then kind of find the center point of where they're, those shots are firing from, that's how you hit those blind shots. It is a skill that takes practice. I'm not the world's greatest um, blind shot shooter yet, <laughs> but someday. No, it's something I'm working on, and it's not easy to do, but... It is a skill that I would recommend practicing when you get a chance. So we drive the lightning out of there. Now that's a combination of the sonar, Torps, um, just pushing in aggressively. We got him to feel threatened enough for his life, and he ducks out of the cloud and we're able to eliminate him. Or I guess we didn't get the kill, but we contributed to getting that destroyer off the map, which is great. And then here we're just going to settle into kind of a long-range traditional French cruiser fire starting a harassment role. And, you know, if you've been watching the cruiser videos up through the line by now, you just, you should kind of understand what the goal of this ship is. Don't get shot. I mean, the Elgerie and the Charles Motel, they have more armor than the ships at the previous line, which is good against cruisers, it's good against destroyers, you can bounce some of those shots. But it's kind of a bad thing when you're facing battleships, which are obviously the biggest threat to you because when they had next to no armor in like the tier 3 through 5 or whatever, presume maybe tier 1 through 5, those battleship shells will go through the armor before the fuse activates and then you'll get overpens. 
So if you're horizontally pointed at those ships, they're actually have a quite a hard time doing damage for you. Even shots entering the Citadel will often uh, overpen on those situations. Algerie, Charles Mattel, they do have enough armor where you really cannot be getting shot with battleships in this thing. If you get hit in the Citadel, it's not going to take long for you to die, but even non-Citadel shots, you know, I think you can take maybe two Citadels and a, a little bit of spare change, but even regular penetrating AP shots will whittle you down quite quickly, so you need to be really wary of getting shot by battleships in this thing. That's why I have it spec'd out for mobility. Um, mod 1 slot aiming system is pretty standard for me. Mod 2 and 3 steering gears. And in this one we do have the range boost. I think it's a 5% range boost. Uh, the next game will be focused on the one that has the, the gun systems where it gives you lower reload time. But I think it slows down your turret traverse or whatever it is. There is some sort of countering um, nerf to go along with the DPM buff. But... You'll see in the next game, if you have it spec'd out for that, and if you play the ship carefully, you can absolutely crush people <laughs> in this thing. And you'll see broadside targets uh, against battleships with AP. I mean, we're, we're just ripping them with a couple citadels there. Don't be afraid to use these AP shells, even at really long ranges. I mean, you know, that Colorado is not exactly a weakly armored ship, and we're able to rip him to shreds there. So... Especially with the short reload, just switch the shots. Broadside cruisers, broadside battleships, bump it over to AP. Anything else, shoot HE at it, and you're just going to rack up the damage in this thing. All you got to do, really, is stay alive, which is kind of easier said than done in these French cruisers. Um, due to the weaknesses we've noted. But if you're able to stay alive, and if you're able to hit some of these long-range shots then you can absolutely rack up the numbers in the ship. Now you see, I do flip around with my speed a lot and headings and stuff like that, and you gotta do everything you can in the book to really be throwing off their aim, dodging the shots. If you're trying to tank shots in this, it's just not gonna work. So, I, I would spec it out for mobility across the board, and I run Rue, you know, even though there's a little bit of a drop-off and, um, offensive capabilities between Rue and Lemon. Staying alive for longer is going to give you more damage per game every time, just as a rule in this ship. So that's my advice, but obviously people have different opinions and different play styles, so you can check them out. Like I said earlier, I think Lemon and Rue would be a fine shot in here. Here you can see that damage. I mean, we're taking some shots and it, it's the ship is pretty easy to sit alive. I haven't seen an armor map on it yet, but it doesn't. It seems like a lot of times when you're getting shot in the side, uh, it goes for a citadel shot. So I'm under the impression that it's a fairly large citadel. I haven't actually faced more than one or two of these in the wild yet, but I've been playing it, um, you know, maybe ten games or so so far, and I've been really liking the ship. I know a lot of people so far have been kind of frustrated with the line. Um, for various reasons and I get that it's not the easiest line to play but if you do like tier 7 play and you do like cruisers at tier 7 this you can make the case that this is the strongest one that we have so far concealment continues to be a low point on these ships if you did notice on my Rue build I do have Makawa on there now it drops my detectability at C down to 13 which comes in under the hipper on my build but I don't believe well, neither of my German cruiser commanders have level 11 or higher, so they only have one influence, and I don't run Makawa as my primary influence on any commander. So presumably, if I put hit, or, um, Makawa on the hipper, that would, again, the Charles Martel, again, would be the highest detectability. So that kind of lends itself to play, be playing at long range, as does the brittleness of the ship as does a lot of different factors. I think on the second game there might be a little bit more close play action, I can't remember for sure, but this one's a little bit more able to close in just because of the damage it can put out. You know, you don't want to be in close range proximity for extended periods of time in my opinion because again you cannot tank, it's not really a brawly ship, 
but in certain situations just due to the fact that you can pump out damage at such a ferocious pace sometimes that'll allow you to get in there close and kind of deal with threats that you might not normally be able to otherwise in the ship so right now you can see here uh, this is still a fairly close game we are up a ship but in terms of points it's not close at all and this is just one of those games where the enemy basically conceded it right from the beginning they let us get all three capture points and then they sat back and waited until we killed them all <laughs> you know not a winning strategy at this point in the time i'm thinking to myself do i trust my teammates enough to stay alive if i die because again if i go in to close in there and get some more damage possibly reset c there's an ever-present chance or a risk that you're going to die in the ship. It really doesn't take much. If you get shot by the wrong shell, you're going to die pretty much. So I'm thinking right now, all I got to do is sail away and we'll win the game. But, you know, I, I thought the lead was so high and the timer was low enough that even if they were able to kill me, just based on my ship's positions more than likely the rest of my team wouldn't be able to kill themselves <laughs> due to um, plays that frankly are similar to the ones I make and there we do get popped right there so in terms of winning the game that was unnecessary and it was somewhat risky and normally I don't advocate closing in and going for damage in situations where you can win the game but again I was just evaluating the situation thinking that our team would likely be able to hold on and they do win on points so again i want to reiterate that do not that's usually a bad play rushing in to take damage when you have the game secured but because we had a lot of ships left time was low and our ships were pretty much out of range from them being able to kill themselves that's why i thought i'd try and get a little bit more damage and try and boost my xp up a little bit but had they been closer range where they could have gotten themselves killed, then I would have just disengaged and let the timer run out. So this game on shards here is the DPM build. Again, that's achieved by switching the range boost on the ship's mod 4 to the, the mod that cuts down on the reload time. I don't recall the names of the mods at the current moment, but... That's what it does. I think it slows the turret traverse down a little bit. Turret traverse is great to begin with, so giving a penalty to something that's best in class already is not the end of the world. I do want to point out the torps while we're getting in range. It's the 2x3, um, 10 kilometers, 60 knot torps. So they are serviceable. I don't recall if they're deployed at all. I didn't see them deployed in that first game, and I can't recall this game I played about a week ago. So we'll see if they get launched at all in this game but torps in my opinion on this ship should not be relied upon and they should not be looked to be used they should be used in situations where you're reacting to things that you didn't necessarily expect right off the bat we take a huge left hook to the jaw and again this is this is something you got to be constantly aware of here i mean that could you can easily get one shot in the ship i haven't done it yet i haven't like I said earlier, I haven't played against enough of these to have one shot one yet, but I promise you, you can do it pretty easily. It's not a sturdy ship. You can one shot a Megami, and I'd say the Megami is just maybe slightly more durable than this, but they're on the same par. Um, but anyway, get if I concluded my point on the Torps or not, I can't remember. But just use them in kind of defensive situations. Because you want to be at pretty much long range, you don't want to be trying to push yourself into position to use them because 15 kilometers is your long range if you have it set up for this dpm build not 10 kilometers 10 kilometers you're getting too close to the enemy and you're going to have a hard time to react in most situations to the incoming fire so and you'll notice i do have the ingenious perk on the rue build that's allowing me to notice that people are targeting me and i do need to be constantly aware of that and be ready to react so Keep that in mind. But we're just out here kind of patrolling. Now on the shards map on the south side, I like to patrol between B and C if possible. And on the north side between A and B. You got some open room, at least when I'm playing cruisers, I mean. You got enough open room to kind of sail around here. The ship is fast. 
but it really requires the speed boost to become really fast. Um, what's the... it's 33 and a half base, which is actually second fastest behind the Megami, but once you fire up that speed boost, I don't know what you get up to. It's probably 38, 39 would be my guess. So using that will allow you to kind of engage, and there we do take another shot, and this is... You know, this was actually my first game I ever played, this Charles Martel, so... Um, but, you know, if you've played the French line up to the ship, you kind of get the drift by now. You just cannot be taking shots. You're not going to be bouncing anything. You can angle against cruiser AP with some success, but even then I'd be a little bit nervous on any incoming fire hitting your ship. It's probably going to do some damage regardless. And here we do have an Indianapolis kind of cruising along broad set. Now this is one of those ships I want to identify and kill. Radar ships, we do have two destroyers in this match, um, so the importance of the destroyers is heightened compared to like a four or a five destroyer match where they're kind of more of a dime or dozen. The Indianapolis can spot them at any time and kill them at any time, so if we can get rid of that ship, we're going to go ahead and do so. And again, broadside cruisers. Fire up that AP and just let it rip. You can see how quick the reload is on these and the reload cycle if you switch your shells. You're not going to have any problem. There's really no excuse for not loading the right shell. So if you got something else loaded, fire it off. Then just switch your shell and commence firing and you'll do quite a bit of damage in this thing. We're already up to 71k and there's the entire enemy team is still standing. We're already down three ships, which is a bit of a problem with this game. But there's only been one objective captured, and it's been captured by us, so... Long term, the earlier you can get that, and if you hold on to it, those are, that's just kind of interest accruing in your bank account over time. And if we're able to whittle down a couple ships here or there, having banked all those points by getting that early capture helps you get back into the game a lot quicker. Compare that to a situation where if you ignore the objectives right off the bat and then you catch up in ships you're still going to have a hard time winning the game because you're going to be down on those points which kind of forces you to kill all the enemy ships and that's not going to happen every game and that's largely outside of your control whether that's able to occur or not so good job getting off to an early lead there we're we able to kind of remove a few ships and or a couple ships so far and catch up a little bit they still do have a two ship lead but this Indianapolis right there I mean he's a one shot I think the destroyer on C we were able to hit him and reset him so he's within striking distance in terms of HP I do need to be very careful here though I mean you can take a look at my health pool and that's a broadside citadel I mean that's a one shot for most situations so being detected here that's first and foremost on my mind that's probably the destroyer on C that we're kind of trying to get in a position to potentially find. He has captured the objective, so he's probably deciding to leave at this point, but if he sticks around and we're able to spot him and kill him, that'd be great. Getting rid of those destroyers, again, like we mentioned earlier, heightened importance, especially that since we've lost one of our destroyers, so now it's kind of a two-to-one situation there. And late game, if you're mismatched in terms of who's got the destroyers, you're going to have a real hard time dealing with that couple reasons. I mean, they can easily capture objectives if that's the route they need to go, or usually battleships are some of the later ships still standing, and without cruiser cover or destroyer cover, those battleships are basically sitting ducks for the incoming destroyers, so pretty basic point, but it needs to be reiterated pretty much constantly. I mean, those destroyers are kind of the the key is to winning a lot of games. Now there's those world-class torps we did mention. I think I just kind of put a shot in at where I suspected that destroyer was. And we've been noticing we've been detected the entire time, so I strongly suspected he was the one still in the area. But we did clip him with a torp, and then I think he shot um, in response, and then becoming detected that way, we were able to finish him off. You were kind of... I do need to keep an eye on those torps, by the way. Um, but angled in towards where he was, they were going to be pretty easy to react against. Now, we're going to talk tomorrow about evaluating torps, but USN Destroyer torps are, can sneak up on you. 
So that's just a little bit of the preview of some of the information we're going to be going over there. But just because people don't think of the USN destroyers as the strongest in terms of torpedo power, but um, they can be quite deadly. Um, so again, we'll talk about that more tomorrow. But here we got the Nagato, and you could see, I looking at this, I think we could probably switch over to AP and do just fine. You got to kind of evaluate with these battleships. What you want to be doing is getting one or two fires on them, and then once they're not in a position to damage con, then you can switch over to that AP. And then you have dual income sources in terms of the damage that you're applying to that ship. Oh, I forgot about this <laughs> game. A couple of my uh, loyal viewers and Discord members were in this, and I was wondering why the hell these guys are shooting at me the entire game when I'm not the closest ship. Now it's occurring to me that they knew who I was and I didn't know who they were, so thanks guys for helping me create this video. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, getting back to my point, if you get those fires started and they can't put them out, then you get that kind of damage that's growing on its own it's just kind of like a dividend paying stock you just kind of set it and forget and then you start firing the AP and then boom you're getting two sources of damage at the same time on that ship once those fires are on the ship hitting those sections that have fires with HE you're doing less damage than you would with the AP and you're not you're, there's no more chance to start the fire so keep that in mind when you're trying to decide which shells to select against these targets Iowa here, you can, again, make the same case. Maybe HE to get them burning would be the right play. And then you can see here, even though we do land a pretty decent AP cell there, we do switch over to the HE. And again, that's just trying to get the baseline fires going. He does have one from another player. And I think it'll take another cell here. You see we aim up just a little bit. And usually, just based on what part of the ship is easiest to hit, there's two middle sections. So those are the easiest places to hit with fires. You can aim for the nose, you can aim for the tail, but those shots become harder, especially at this long range. So looking back at here, I probably would have switched over to AP once we had those two middle sections burning. Iowa does get around the island, though, for a little bit of a momentary respite. And you can see two bases compared to none. Again, this is a situation where all we got to do is play pretty conservatively, and the game should be ours. But by keeping the island, well, he's got an island by him and I got an island by me. I'm utilizing both of them as cover and trying to make sure that, you know, he has a hard time seeing me. I'm just getting, every time you can fire a gun without being detected, that's a free shot. You know, it's a shot that they can't counter. You can see here, now I do shoot and I'm detected, but I'm already angled away and I'm already kind of moving back behind my little island. So, managing your uh, detectability puts you in control of the engagement, and by being in control of that, you can really dictate, you know, how much damage you really can possibly subject yourself to, and it's a very smart play. There's I, There was a funny post on Reddit this week about some, I don't know 100% if the guy was kidding or not, but it was like, man up and fight me out in the open, could hide in behind islands. Which, you know, it's just incorrect. I, I understand the sentiment. I understand the frustration for people who don't um, understand the game mechanics very well. But utilizing your cover is cruiser 101. You know, you're, you cannot trade shots with a battleship sitting in the open because they will absolutely kill you sooner or later. All they have to do is hit you. Whereas you have to hit them dozens of times to kill them. So it's inherently not a fair fight, but by using the cover that's available in the game, that's how you even the odds, and if you use it properly, you can actually tip those odds in your favor. So don't let the, any machismo or whatever get in the way of playing smart. You always want to be utilizing every aspect of the game and take advantage of any sort of um, advantage that you can give yourself. So at this point, we got 133k damage, and pretty solid game we've got a few kills captured the base and this is again I haven't played a whole heck of a lot of these games I've just due to time constraints I've been able to delve into it as much as I can but I've frankly been quite impressed with this ship right out of the gate uh, just the offensive capabilities that it possesses 
I don't want to crown it as the strongest tier 7 cruiser yet, just because I played the Megami a whole heck of a lot better, and I do have a lot of respect for that ship. But, this is definitely a strong contender. And again, if you've been kind of feeling down on the line, you don't know if it's worth it to you. If you do like playing tier 7, and um, you're willing to invest a little bit of time, and possibly some endure some frustration getting through some of those lower tier ships, which may not be... Um, as rewarding to play. Well, this one comes out of the gate swinging, so I like it quite a bit. I'll definitely be playing the ship quite a lot. And, you know, long range here, you can see I still think there's a little bit of a drag on these French shells. I haven't noticed that um, diminishing on this tier 7, but once you adjust that in your mind, you just add, you know, a couple, a little bit of a lead to the targets and the guns once you incorporate that adjustment to your aim they're really good I mean the arcs are high enough that you can go over some islands but they're they still seem to be pretty accurate guns and pretty easy to hit guns so yeah I mean everything about the weapon systems on this ship I really enjoy quite a bit it's just you need to play it still with the understanding that you can't be taking shots and here, again, this is kind of a high-risk play, but, you know, score-wise, we're up big. You, I, you can criticize my play for both of these because we do have the win wrapped up. And so do I need to kill this Iowa to win the game? No. But, like I mentioned, this was the first game I played in the ship, and we did have a pretty high damage game. So I was trying to go for 150 at this point, to be honest with you. But from a pure win standpoint... You know, being in a really fragile ship like this, not the best move. Now you got to keep an eye on that, the ingenious perk. Even though it's not displayed here, he must have switched his aim after he fired. It actually looked to me, due to that dispersion, how wild it was. I think he just didn't have me selected there. I think he was aiming at me, but he dropped his target selection accidentally. And that's, that's a good look at the opposite. And I've tried to demonstrate it on a few different videos what it looks like when you don't have a target selected and you shoot the shot, how wild it looks, but that's the first time I know for a fact that we saw it from the other person's perspective. So that was actually pretty interesting. I didn't I didn't pick up on that until just watching this as I'm narrating it. So that's my look at the Charles Martel. Again, I think it's a very strong ship, and I hope you did enjoy these two looks at it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, I'd love it if you consider subscribing. I got a lot of World of Warships coming all the time for you guys. Questions, comments, leave them below. I'd love to hear from you. And we'll see you all later. All right, peace.